Hey you guys, my name is Cyan Martin and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I'm very excited because we are going to be doing my very first ever 24 hour readathon. There are two ways people do this. They normally either go for 24 hours straight or they break it up and use a timer slash stopwatch method. I'm sure we all know this if you watch a lot of booktube. So for me personally, I will be splitting this up hopefully just between two days, 12 hours today and 12 hours tomorrow because here's the thing, I need sleep, okay? You do too, so please, if you're gonna do this, break it up. Don't do all-nighters. I know sometimes it happens, but you need sleep. You're six to eight hours. If you're an overachiever like I am, you're 10 to 12 hours. You need it. So there's just no way I'm not not going to be sleeping. So we are going to be reading for 24 hours within two days. And for this readathon, I also chose to do strictly thrillers slash mysteries because I feel like that's going to be the easiest. It won't get boring. It won't feel repetitive. Most thrillers are relatively different and fast paced and kind of easy to go through. So I chose five books for this video. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it through all five. I feel like I am an average speed reader. Is that the right way to say it? I feel like I read at an average speed. So most people that I see do this typically get around four or so books. So I might have to stop in the middle of one of these books or who knows, I might just go over a little bit if I have to, to finish a book. But enough rambling. Let me show you the five books that I picked out. First up, we have Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. Pretty sure this is about a woman that her daughter goes missing. Ten years later, she meets a little girl that looks just like her daughter when she went missing. So that sounds super interesting to me. Then I have Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. I have just heard really great things about this author. And also mostly this book is the one book that I see most from her. And I'm not going to lie, I have no idea what it's about. But it looks like there's a snowy little stranded house. Should be interesting. And then we have The Maidens by Alex M Michaelides? 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 Maybe? Michaelides? Anyways, this Alex dude. Um, he wrote The Silent Patient and I really enjoyed that book so I'm hoping I'll enjoy this one as well. I'm pretty sure this one is like a dark academia book and a professor is like a killer and there's this group of girls called The Maidens that are like weird, I guess. I don't really know, but I'm excited to jump into this one. And then I have The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. This one is about a man and woman that they meet at an airport and by the end of their meeting, they decide to kill. It's either his spouse, her spouse, or both of their spouses. I'm not sure, but I mean, I'm sold, so I'm gonna read it. And then the last one I have is Final Girls by Riley Sager. I honestly have no clue what this book is about, but I have read two other Riley Sager books. I read The House Across the Lake, and I really enjoyed that one, and then I read Lock Every Door, and I didn't really like that one, so it's gonna be interesting to give him another try and see how I feel. I'm pretty sure it could go either way. I'll either like it or I won't. So these are the five books that I have. I'm super excited to start reading. It is currently 7.51 on Monday, June 26th. So I'm going to kind of hurry up and get myself a snack and settle down, get comfy, and get ready to hopefully start at 8 a.m. Okay, so we have made it to my comfy spot in the living room. I have a glass of chocolate milk because adulting. And my first book that I'm going to start off with is actually going to be Final Girls because I know nothing about this and I thought it would be really fun to go into a book blind for the first book. It is 7.59 and we're about to get started in one minute. This is actually the longest minute of my life. Okay, it is 8 a.m. and we are starting now. Aw, it says to Mike. I hope you liked this book, Mike. Okay, so we are at an hour in nine minutes and i am on page 100 of final girls 
So this book is about three girls that are all lone survivors of massacres. Each of them were involved in separate attacks where everyone else that was there was murdered and they survived. Once the press got a hold of that info, they deemed them the final girls. And the three of them are Quincy, Lisa, and Sam. This book mostly revolves around Quincy. And this isn't a spoiler because it is on the back, but Lisa is actually murdered 10 years later after these attacks. And so now Sam has come back into Quincy's life and they're just pretty much gonna try to figure out what happened to Lisa. At the same time, Quincy cannot remember anything that happened to her the night of her attack. And so she's also basically just trying to remember. That's what we're going through in this book. We're trying to solve what happened with Lisa and figure out what happened with Quincy. And there's a now and then timeline. So she's slowly kind of getting these memories back. And it's very interesting. I didn't think it was gonna be like a whodunit, but it is. Although the concept is interesting, so far it's a little bit slow. Just a tad, but I'm only 100 pages in. I have a lot more to go, so I'm hoping things get better. But yeah, so far, not bad. <laughs> just finished final girls i finished it in four hours and five minutes as for my final thoughts i thought the book was decent the plot twist did get me however there are times where it was just really slow and it wasn't that engaging i guess you could say so because of that i give it a three star it was just kind of a mid thriller it wasn't great but it wasn't bad either now we're moving on to the next book of the readathon which is the kind worth killing because it's just it's speaking to me you know i want to read it so we're gonna read this and yeah let's get into it <laughs> We are at 5 hours and almost 45 minutes and I have made it to page 140 of this book and I just have to say wow. So like I mentioned, this book is about Lily and Ted and they meet at an airport as complete strangers. Ted's marriage is failing and so after a little bit of talking, they decide to kill his wife. I really can't say anything without spoiling it, but I really, really am loving this book right now. The part that I just left off on was the biggest plot twist that I absolutely was not expecting at all. And so now I just have no idea where this book could possibly go from there. And I'm so excited to see, but I really like it because you get to see both Ted and Lily's points of view. You get to learn more about their past and you kind of see that they're both a little messed up in the head. So that explains why why they're just like okay with killing so far this is fantastic and i cannot wait to keep reading so i'm going to eat lunch though because it's actually 2 p.m so that's very late and then we will come back and read some more okay guys so we are almost at eight hours and I have officially finished The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. And this book, wow, just wow. This book had plot twist after plot twist after plot twist. I swear, I, oh, I can't say anything without spoiling it. But it was just absolutely not what you would expect from a book. You get so many people's points of views. You get to see what happens to them. Honestly, I love Lily. You probably shouldn't say that about a murderer, but it's okay because the people in this book that were murdered kind of deserved it it's okay to say that because they're fictional and i don't know what to say it was just so good i don't want to ruin it but i'm telling you read this book if you haven't already i'm also excited because i learned that there is a second one coming out or it's already out i'm not going to read it in this video but this book was so good that i'm definitely going to have to eventually pick up the second one because amazing peter great job. So now I am going to start reading The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. I'm saying Michaelides. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but I'm saying Michaelides. We're gonna start The Maidens. <laughs> Okay guys, so 
We are at 11 hours and I just finished The Maidens. This is about Mariana and basically she used to go to Cambridge and now her niece Zoe goes to Cambridge and a murder takes place there. And the girl happens to be one of Zoe's friends. So Mariana goes to campus to kind of console her niece. But then once she gets there, she's kind of just like, well, now I'm going to look into this murder for whatever reason she's like a group therapist so really i don't know why she decides to kind of investigate on her own but she does and she is convinced that the killer is this guy named edward who is a professor there and he has this study group of young girls in his class and they're just kind of weird they follow him around they're pretty much obsessed with him and it's just creepy that they're only young girls that he allows into this group calls them the maidens there's just something off about them and the ending i can say that i really didn't see the ending coming but just because a plot twist gets you doesn't necessarily mean that it's a great book i honestly thought this was so slow and so boring most of the time and the ending wasn't anything completely mind-blowing and that's why i didn't really update you guys because i wasn't really caring that much about this book i didn't have any updates to give you i just read it for the sake of this video basically it's not a terrible book but i just didn't really like it i liked it less than final girls so because of that i feel like I have to give it a 2.75. For me, that just means that I personally did not like this book. There were some good things about it. Like I said, the plot twist was good. There were other things happening that was good, but I just, it wasn't for me. So that is pretty disappointing because I love The Silent Patient, but it is what it is. Now, I only have an hour left for today, but here's my dilemma. If I get into a thriller and it's really, really good, I'm not gonna wanna stop reading. But will I have the time tomorrow to go for 13 hours instead of 12. See, I don't know. Should I just start another one and see how it goes? You know what? I think we will. We're going to start another one, see how it goes, and then we'll be halfway through and we'll be done for today. So I think the next one I'm going to start is Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. I'm going to try to just knock out this last hour and then that's that. <laughs> I will see you guys in a little bit. Okay, you guys, so it is the next day. Last night, I did read for almost an hour. I got to 11 hours and 54 minutes. So I'm just gonna read a little bit extra today. It's no big deal. I ended up getting to page 70 during that time. This book is about a couple, Amelia and Lou. What did you do? Okay, so in Rock, Paper, Scissors, this is about Amelia and Adam. They are a married couple who are kind of on the rocks. And when they win a free trip to, it's like a chapel that was turned into an Airbnb out in the middle of the woods in a snowy area. They get snowed in there and a bunch of weird stuff starts happening. And it's actually kind of funny because you get both of their point of views. So you get to see them arguing with each other. You kind of get to understand why their marriage is on the rocks. And you also get all of these letters from the wife during their anniversaries that she wrote in the past. So that also explains a lot more about why their marriage is failing and hence why they're on this trip to kind of reignite the flame, if you will. And it's it's actually kind of funny because all this weird stuff keeps happening and they keep blaming each other for it. But where I left off, which was page 70, I decided to leave off here specifically because there's a new point of view coming into the picture and I didn't read ahead, I didn't want to spoil it for myself, so I just made myself stop last night for the video. So now I'm going to eat my breakfast of a chai tea latte and blueberry waffles because I'm the definition of health. We're going to eat and read a little bit. <laughs> It has been 14 hours and 36 minutes 
and I just finished Rock, Paper, Scissors. This book, you guys, was once again so freaking good. I really liked the plot twist in it. I thought it was amazing. Did I ever rate The Kind Worth Killing? I read that yesterday. I don't think I rated it, but I gave it a 4.5. Anyways, so first off, the chapters were really short, but every single chapter, you literally just had to keep reading because they all ended on like a small cliffhanger. I did not expect the plot twist at all. It was so good. Good. The people that this happened to, once again, they kind of deserved what they had coming. Now I understand why people talk so much about this. It was so fast paced. It's only like 200 and something pages actually. It's 291. It was so short, so fast and easy to read. I loved every second of it and I would recommend everyone to read this book. I will say though at the very end after the biggest like plot twist I guess you could say, it's like she just kept adding a little bit more and more and I feel like I didn't necessarily need all of these extra things so because of that I give it a 4.5 but it was still so good and I highly recommend everyone read this book but now I'm going to read our last book then she was gone the thing is is that we're only at 14 hours and it's not going to take me 10 hours to read this book so if that's the case what we'll do is just head on over to our kindle afterwards because there's so many thrillers that are on kindle unlimited so for now we're gonna read this one We are now at 16 hours and 41 minutes, and I am on page 162 of Then She Was Gone. So this is about Laurel, who her daughter Ellie goes missing, and now it is 10 years later, and they find out- does it say this? Okay, no, it doesn't say this. That would have been a spoiler. I caught myself. Now it is 10 years later and she starts dating this guy named Floyd, and he has a little girl named Poppy who looks- just like her daughter did when she went missing. I'm just gonna say I really don't know how I feel about this book because so far I just don't like the characters and you know a lot of time in thrillers we do have morally gray characters and you'll like them but in this one the mom is just awful. Like at one point after her daughter goes missing because she has another daughter named Hannah, she's looking at her daughter and she's thinking to herself, you should have been the one to go missing, not Ellie. Like, excuse me, ma'am, that's messed up. I don't like that. I don't like Laurel. Also, I get really weird vibes from Floyd, so I'm... I'm suspicious. I also just feel like she's using his little girl that looks like her daughter to kind of replace her daughter and that's not right. It's just, I don't know, I feel weird and I do also have a prediction and I don't like it. If my prediction is correct, I'm not gonna like the ending of this book because my prediction is messed up and icky but I'm gonna keep reading and see how it goes. I'm just nervous. I did it. I finished, then she was gone, and my prediction was pretty much correct. I didn't have like a detailed prediction. I literally just said that. Why did I forget the word? But I did have a general prediction and it was true and I didn't like it. It just made me feel icky. I think I said that earlier, but I just, ew. You know, I'm not gonna lie. It's a great book. I did enjoy it, but the ending was just gross in a way and it definitely has darker themes so if you're into the darker themes you're gonna like it but for me personally i didn't expect it to be that dark and i don't like where it headed i don't like where it went but i can admit that it was a good read but for me personally i'm just gonna give it three stars right in the middle because of everything i just said i basically just explained myself but now parker went to work and we have finished the five books that i picked out and we still have a little over four hours to go. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick out a book on my Kindle and now that Parker's gone to work, I'm gonna go lay in bed and read because that just sounds really nice. <laughs> I decided that for my next read, I was going to read Frida McFadden's The Inmate. Because I've heard great things about Frida McFadden books, I have read The Housemaid and The Housemaid's Secret. really loved those. I love her writing style. All of her books are on Kindle Unlimited, but for some reason this one just called my name. So we're going to start reading this one. 
So we are now at 23 hours. I have made it to, where am I? Chapter 42, page 287 in The Inmate. Oh, I literally only have 100 pages left, so I think I might be able to finish it in this hour, if not a little bit further. So this is about Brooke. Brooke went through a traumatic experience 10 years ago. I'm just realizing that thrillers love using 10 years as their time frame in their books. But anyways, 10 years ago, she went through a traumatic experience where she was almost murdered and, and three of her friends that were there with her that night were also murdered. And there are two people who weren't that were also there. One of them is her boyfriend and she ends up testifying that he's the one that murdered their friends, but it was actually dark. So she didn't see the killer's face. She just thought that it was him for other reasons. Now he's in jail serving a life sentence and she starts working at the same prison. So they end up coming in contact again after all this time and now she's kind of talking to him and rethinking over maybe he wasn't the killer. So we have that going on. There's also other people in her life that are part of the story. It's basically another whodunit situation and you're trying to figure out who actually was the killer that night and you don't know who to trust. Everyone's a little suspicious and I'm liking it a lot. It does remind me a lot actually of Final Girls only because she survived and like in Final Girls she couldn't remember what happened in this one. She didn't see their face so she doesn't actually know who it was. But yeah, they remind me of each other except I'm liking this one a whole lot better than I liked Final Girls. It's really fast paced. The writing is so easy to understand and Freedom McFadden is just so good. But we're gonna knock out this very last hour and keep reading and maybe be able to finish. <music> All right, you guys, so we have officially ended the 24 hour readathon. I know I went a little bit over, but it's okay. A little bit more is perfectly fine. I wanted to jump in here real quick before the sun sets and end this video off with my final thoughts for all of the books. So the first book we read was Final Girls by Riley Sager. I give this a three star because it was a decent thriller. It was kind of in the middle, like it wasn't bad, but it wasn't the best. Then I read The Kind Worth Killing. This was just so amazing. It really does a full is it 180? 360? It takes a completely different path than you think it's going to take and it's just so good. I will be recommending this to any and everyone that will listen to me speak. And so I gave this one a four star. Next I read The Maidens. I didn't really like this one at all. The plot twist did get me but it was just so slow and boring almost. So I gave it a 2.5. Then I read Rock Paper Scissors by Alice Feeney. I loved this book so much. The only complaint I have is that at the end it dragged out a little bit. So because of that I give it a four star. Then I read Then She Was Gone. We all know how I feel. I felt just very icky with the way that it went. It was by no means a bad book. So I'm going to give it a three because I enjoyed it. Well, that's not the right words to say. I'm going to give it a three because I can acknowledge that it was a good thriller, but I guessed what was going to happen. I didn't like what happened, so therefore it's sticking out a three. It's in the middle. And then I read The Inmate. I don't think I even told you my final thoughts on this, but the ending got me because Frida McFadden just manipulated me throughout this entire book. I was switching back and forth between who I thought could have possibly been the killer and then the very, very end, the epilogue, I guessed it, but I was like, no, that's absolutely crazy. Like, that's not, that didn't happen. But then it did happen. So I was like, wow. Frida McFadden and I, great minds think alike, you know? So yeah, the ending of this book was really good. I really enjoyed it. However, it still isn't like a top mystery slash thriller that I'm going to recommend to people. It's just kind of one of those fun time thrillers when you just want something fast and easy to read, don't want to have to think a lot. So because of that, I gave it a 3.75. Those are all the books that I read. I hope that you guys enjoyed this 24-hour readathon. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts were. And leave more recommendations down below because I love thrillers. That's it for this video. I hope that you all have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Bye!